I'd like to call the meeting to order. Adequate notice of this meeting as provided as required under Chapter 231 PL 1975, specifying the time, date, location, login, or dial in information, and to the extent known. The agenda by posting a copy of the notice on the municipal building, municipal court, and two municipal library bulletin boards. Municipal website providing a copy to the official newspapers of the township and by filing a copy in the office of the township clerk in accordance with the certification by the clerk, which will be entered into the minutes. In order to ensure a clear record of the meeting can be made and all, all parties are heard in an organized fashion, all members of the public that are participating remotely will be muted during the meeting. The township will provide for public comment periods for both remote and in-person attendees separately. If a member of the public wishes to speak during any public comment portion for remote attendees, please raise your hand. This can be done either through Zoom app or by pressing star nine on your phone. When it's your turn to speak, you will receive a prompt to request your unmute. Please click on the prompt or press star six on your phone to unmute and begin making your comments. All members of the public will have three minutes to speak and should ask any and all questions they may have during that period. At the conclusion of your three minutes, the remote attendees will be muted again. In-person attendees will also receive three minutes to ask any and all questions and may then take a seat at which time the council or administration will respond as necessary. <clears throat> Should you have any further comments or questions, the township is always available by email and phone and you can always call the mayor's office during normal operating hours. Each member of the public shall only have one opportunity to speak during each public portion. As the technology does not allow us to know if there are multiple callers on any individual phone line or login user account, we ask that if you wish to speak that you log in or dial us separately so that we can recognize you as a separate individual. Mrs. Cedar, would you please take a roll? Councilwoman Cahill? Here. Councilwoman Carmichael? Here. Councilman Espinosa? Here. Councilwoman Lombardi? Here. Councilman Rouse. Councilman Shaw. Yes. Council President Aaron. Here. Please stand for the flag salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And, and to the republic, republic for which it stands, one nation, nation under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Item number five, comments from administration or council regarding adjournment on any matters on this agenda. None, thank you. No comments, council president. Item number six, open to the public. Comments regarding consent agenda items. For, for remote attendees, if you wish to speak at this time, please raise your hand either on Zoom app or by pressing star nine on your phone. When is your turn to speak? You receive or hear a request to unmute yourself. Please click the prompt or press star six on your phone to unmute yourself. At that time, please state your name and your address. Know that you have three minutes in which to make your comments. The council administration will respond if necessary if you have completed any comments or questions. Council President, there are no remote attendees with their hand raised regarding this agenda item. I'm going to close the remote portion for in-person attendees. If you wish to speak at this time, please come to the podium, state your name and address, and know that you have three minutes in which to make your comments. You may take a seat after completion of your comments or questions, and the council or administration will then respond if necessary. This is for the consent agenda, item number six, item number 12. Costa Septimios, 58 Curtis Avenue, Piscataway. 58 Curtis, I welcome everyone here. Come and walk around that house, please. Tell these people what you see. Um, this item 12A, uh, does that include 7th and Mansfield? That corner has to be done, please. Thank you. Yeah. 
Council President, this includes our uh, transfer station site where we have, uh, when we have large damage events that we store it and then every six months or so uh, we have a, a company come in and, and grind it down and then we move it to the recycling facility. Thank you, Mayor. Okay, I'm gonna close the public portion. Item number seven, fully sewer ordinance, second reading, 2,500,000 in various sewer improvements, and this is open to the public resolution adopting ordinance. Mr. City, you please read the ordinance. Okay, before I do that, I just want to acknowledge that um, Councilman Rouse, I believe, is on the call. Can you unmute yourself, Councilman Rouse, so that we can see if you're here with your audio? Can you hear me? Yes, thank you very much. I just want to acknowledge you're here at the meeting. Thank you. All right. Be it resolved by the Township Council of Piscataway Township, New Jersey, that an ordinance entitled Ordinance Appropriating $2,500,000 from the Sewer Utility Budget Capital Outlay for Various Sewer Utility Improvements in and by the Township of Piscataway in the County of Middlesex, New Jersey, was introduced on the 9th day of November 2023 and had passed the first reading and was published on the 17th day of November 2023. Now therefore be it resolved that the aforesaid ordinance, having had a second reading on December 5th, 2023, be adopted, passed, and after passage be published together with a notice of the date of passage or approval in the official newspaper. Be it further resolved that this ordinance shall be assigned number 2023-31. This is open to the public. For remote attendees, if you wish to speak at this time, please raise your hand either on Zoom app or by pressing star nine. When it's your turn to speak, you receive or hear a request to unmute yourself. Please click the prompt or press star six on your phone to unmute yourself. At that time, please state your name and address and know that you have three minutes in which to make your comments. The council administration will respond if necessary if you have completed any comments or questions. Council President, there are no remote attendees with their hand raised regarding this agenda item. I'm going to close the remote portion for in-person attendees. If you wish to speak at this time, please come to the podium, state your name and address, and know that you have three minutes in which to make your comments. You may take a seat after completion of your comments or questions, and the council administration will respond if necessary. This is for item number seven. I see none. I'm going to close the public portion. Do I have a motion? Motion. Do I have a second? Second. Sue, did you please take the roll? Councilwoman Cahill? Yes. Councilwoman Carmichael? Yes. Councilman Espinosa? Yes. Councilwoman Lombardi? Yes. Councilman Rouse? Yes. Thank you. Councilman Shaw? Yes. Council President Earn. Yes, item passes on a second reading. Item number eight, bond ordinance, second reading, four million two hundred twenty thousand, four million nine hundred thousand, various capital improvements. This is open to the public as a resolution adopting ordinance. Mr. City, please read the ordinance. Be resolved by the Township Council of Piscataway Township, New Jersey, that an ordinance entitled Bond Ordinance providing for various capital improvements in and by the Township of Piscataway in the County of Middlesex, New Jersey, appropriating $4,222,000, therefore, and authorizing the issuance of $4,009,000 bonds or notes of the township to finance part of the cost thereof, was introduced on the 9th day of November 2023, and had passed the first reading and was published on the 17th day of November 2023. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the aforesaid ordinance, having had a second reading on December 5, 2023, be adopted, passed, and after passage be published together with a notice of the date of passage or approval in the official newspaper. Be it further resolved that this ordinance shall be assigned number 2023-32. Okay, this is open to the public for remote attendees. If you wish to speak at this time, please raise your hand either on Zoom app or by, by phone by pressing star nine. When it is your turn to speak, you'll receive or hear a request to unmute yourself. Please click the prompt or press star six on your phone to unmute yourself. At that time, please state your name and address to know that you have three minutes in which to make your comments. The council administration will respond if necessary after you have completed any comments or questions.
Council President, there are no remote attendees with their hand raised regarding this agenda item. I'm going to call your remote motion for in person. If you wish to speak at this time, please come to the podium, state your name and address, and know that you have three minutes in which to make your comments. You may take a seat after completion of your comments or questions, and the council or administration will respond if necessary. This is for item number eight, bond ordinance. I see none. I'm going to close the public portion. Do I have a motion? Motion. Do I have a second? Second, Carmichael. Sue, did you please take the roll? Councilwoman Cahill? Yes. Councilwoman Carmichael? Yes. Councilman Espinosa? Yes. Councilwoman Lombardi? Yes. Councilman Rouse? Yes. Councilman Shaw? Yes. Council President Earn? Yes, item passes on a second reading. Item number nine, ordinance on the first reading, amending and supplementing various Chapters of the Municipal Code is a resolution adopting ordinance. Mrs. C, did you please read the ordinance? Be it resolved by the Township Council of Piscataway Township, New Jersey, that an ordinance entitled Ordinance to Amend and Supplement the Revised General Ordinances of the Township of Piscataway, County of Middlesex, State of New Jersey, amending tap Chapter 2, Administration, Section 64 and 80.12, Chapter 7, Traffic, Sections 8, 14, 17, and 25, Chapter 15, Short-Term Rentals, Sections 2, 3, 8, and 9. Chapter 16, Housing and Rent Control, Sections 2, 4, 6, and 12. Chapter 19, Fire Prevention and Protection, Sections 10, 14, and 15. Chapter 20, Land Subdivision, Section 5. Chapter 21, Zoning, Section 6. And Chapter 24, Site Plan Review, Section 5. Bean is hereby adopted on the first reading that it be published in the official newspaper and that a second reading of public hearing be held at 7.30 p.m. prevailing time at the Piscataway Municipal Building, 455 Hose Lane, Piscataway, New Jersey, as well as by remote meeting format on the 19th day of December, 2023. Be it further resolved that a copy of this ordinance shall be posted in at least two public places within the township prior to the day of the second reading and final passage, and a copy of this ordinance shall be made available at the office of the township clerk for any interested member of the public. Thank you, Mr. Cedar. Do I have a motion? Motion. Do I have a second? Second. Mr. Cedar, you please take the roll. Councilwoman Cahill? Yes. Councilwoman Carmichael? Yes. Councilman Espinosa? Yes. Councilwoman Lombardi? Yes. Councilman Rouse? Yes. Councilman Shaw? Yes. Council President Earn. Yes, item passes on the first reading. Item number 10, ordinance on the first reading, amending and supplemented chapter seven, traffic section 40, control of the movement and parking of traffic on public and private property to assert title 39 jurisdiction on 135 Flemington Street. It's a resolution adopting ordinance. Ms. C, did you please read the ordinance? Be it resolved by the Township Council of Piscataway Township, New Jersey, that an ordinance entitled Ordinance to amend and supplement the revised general ordinances of the Township of Piscataway, County of Middlesex, State of New Jersey, amending Chapter 7, Traffic, Section 40, Control for the Movement and the Parking of Traffic on Public and Private Property, to assert Title 39 jurisdiction on 135 Fleming Street, B, and is hereby adopted on the first reading, that it be published in the official newspaper, and that a second reading and public hearing be held at 7.30 p.m. prevailing time at the Piscataway Municipal Building, 455 Hose Lane, Piscataway, New Jersey, as well as by remote meeting format on the 19th day of December 2023. Be it further resolved that a copy of this ordinance shall be posted in at least two public places within the township prior to the day of the second reading and final passage, and a copy of this ordinance shall be made available at the office of the township clerk for any interested member of the public. Thank you, Ms. Cedar. Do I have a motion? A motion shall. Do I have a second? Second, Rouse. Ms. Cedar, did you please take the roll? Councilwoman Cahill? Yes. Councilwoman Carmichael? Yes. Councilman Espinosa? Yes. Councilwoman Lombardi? Yes. Councilman Rouse? Yes. Councilman Shaw? Yes. Council President Earn? Yes, item passes on a first reading. Item number 11, ordinance on a first reading, granting municipal consent for the operation of cable television system in the township of Piscataway to CSC TKR LLC DBA 
Cable vision of Raritan Valley. Does the resolution adopting an ordinance, Ms. Seed, did you please read the ordinance? Be it resolved by the Township Council of Piscataway Township, New Jersey, that an ordinance entitled an ordinance granting municipal consent for the operation of a cable television system within the Township of Piscataway, New Jersey, to CSC TKR LLC doing business as Cable Vision of Raritan Valley, be and is hereby adopted on the first reading that it be published in the official newspaper, and that a second reading and public hearing be held at 7.30 p.m. prevailing time at the Piscataway Municipal Building, 455 Hose Lane, Piscataway, New Jersey, as well as by remote meeting format on the 19th day of December 2023. Be it further resolved that a copy of this ordinance shall be posted in at least two public places within the township prior to the day of the second reading and final passage, and a copy of this ordinance shall be made available at the office of the township clerk for any interested member of the public. Do I have a motion? Um, Council President, if I could, before we take a motion, I just wanted to comment on this, um, and, and I don't know if the mayor will want to say some things, but um, we all know up here on the board um, all of the struggles that the township went through, and obviously all the municipalities across the country with um, bandwidth during um, the lockdowns and COVID and the strains on the system, and we had a lot of residents who were very upset. Um, nothing is perfect, as we know. We would love to see even more improvements, but um, the um, mayor was um, part of one of uh, a handful of New Jersey towns. Uh, um, I was honored to just be part of that um, conversation and testifying in front of the BPU about some of the issues with what was going on with um, the service to the town and our residents. Um, this obviously is our contract to keep them, but as a side note, there are some additional things that uh, um, Altice has agreed to that aren't part of your regular contract that are specific to our town. That was from a lot of negotiations and really putting our foot down. And then, um, Mayor, I don't know if you want to talk about the BPU settlement because there isn't a settlement yet, but my understanding it's coming. It's coming, but I just want to remind the council members, this is really just for the cable TV portion right here because this is all only what we can franchise it's not has anything to do with uh, high-speed internet or anything to that effect so this is just for cable TV and you have to remember that their subscriptions are dropping now that there's got a lot of cord cutters out there as Dennis knows um, you know so you know when that that drops that's less revenue coming into the town as far as the cable TV. But they still agreed to, yes. um, in this contract, continue with the support and actually add extra, yes. even though they're- Some extra things that in from some of our government facilities, like the community center, the libraries, and things BPU like that. BPU settlement is about the broadband, correct? That's correct. And that hopefully will be soon, maybe not before the end of the year, who knows? Thank you, Gabriel. Do I have a motion? Motion. I have a second. Second. Susie, so you please take the roll. Councilwoman Cahill? Yes. Councilwoman Carmichael? Yes. Councilman Espinosa? Yes. Councilwoman Lombardi? Yes. Councilman Rouse? Yes. Councilman Shaw? Yes. Council President Earn? Yes, item passes on the first reading. Item number 12, consent agenda resolution for a um, for Efficiency items have been consolidated into consent agenda to be voted on together. The materials of these items have been distributed to the council in advance of the meeting. At that time, at this time, is there any items that the council would like removed from the consent agenda to be discussed or voted on separately? I see none. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Second. Susie, you please take the roll. Councilwoman Cahill? Yes. Councilwoman Carmichael? Yes. Councilman Espinosa? Yes. Councilwoman Lombardi? Yes. Councilman Rouse? Yes. Councilman Shaw? Yes. Council President Earn? Yes, item passes. Item number 13, announcements and comments from officials. Councilman Cahill? Uh, thank you, um, Council President. Um, I would like to wish um, the residents of Piscataway who are um, about to start celebrating some of the major holidays. Um, Hanukkah will begin uh, first full day on Friday, but starts in the evening um, of the 7th. 
Um, and as we come into the holiday season, um, there are plenty of organizations in and around town who are in need of donations, such as fish, other food pantries, um, and just ask that our residents be aware of that um, and contribute where they may. Thank you. Thank you, Carolyn. Councilman Carmichael. Good evening. I uh, mentioned this last night at the Santa show. Uh, the, the Holmes Marshall Firehouse Women's Auxiliary is hosting a Christmas party for children on Saturday, this coming Saturday, at 1 p.m. at the Firehouse. And uh, they, are, they are having a free toy giveaway on the first come, first serve basis, plus food and refreshments. So um, come out if you bring your kids. Bring your kids. <laughs> Thank you, Councilwoman. Council uh, Espinosa. Yeah, I want to want to remind everyone that uh, as um, uh, Cons uh, Councilwoman um, Cahill had mentioned that there's a lot of festivities that are going to start. So please be safe out there. Drive very slow. Um, temperatures are dropping, uh, and also you know you have to be careful of the roads out there. So please take your time. There's no rush going anywhere. You know it's okay if you're five or ten minutes late. Just just please you know slow down. Thank you. Councilman Lombardi. Yes, this Friday evening, uh, Santa will be arriving at our uh, town hall here at 7 o'clock, and we'll be having our annual tree lighting here for our uh, families here in Piscataway. So hopefully everyone can come join. Councilman Thanks. Rouse. Uh, yes, um, while, be, while being uh, restricted and shut in, uh, it's a new experience for me because I'm normally out there doing some of everything. But um, I want to thank the whole council, the mayor, and everyone that's involved that has prayed for me and my family uh, going through this uh, recovery. So I just want to thank you all, and one day I'll be able to thank you person personally. But have a wonderful season of holidays, and I pray God's blessing upon everyone. God bless you. Thank you, Councilman Rouse. Councilman Shaw. No, thanks. This is the Minister of Tindiasi. <laughs> Mayor. Just we want to remind uh, folks, uh, Thursday is a solemn day for the military in the country. It's uh, Pearl Harbor Day. And if anybody's ever been out to, uh, to see the Ar USS Arizona Memorial, it's a very moving experience. Township Attorney? No comments, thank you. Yes, and I have no comment either. Item number 15, I'm sorry, item number 14, agenda session for this September 12, 2023 resolution authorizing cancellation of sewer for sprinkler credits, various blocks and lots. Resolution Fire District number one, commissioner's compensation. Resolution authorizing acceptance of the project and release of retainage, Ethel Road Roadway Improvements, KM Construction Corporation. Resolution authorizing budget transfers and a motion to accept the minutes of the council meeting October 3rd, 2023. Item number 15, open to the public for remote attendees. If you wish to speak at this time, please raise your hand either on Zoom app or by pressing star nine. When it is your turn to speak, you will receive or hear a request to unmute yourself. Please click the prompt or press star six on your phone to unmute yourself. At that time, please state your name and address and know that you have three minutes in which to make your comments. Council administration will respond if necessary after you have completed any comments or questions. Council President, there are no remote attendees with their hand raised regarding this agenda item. I'm going to close the remote portion for in person attendees. If you wish to speak at this time, please come to the podium, state your name and address, and know that you have three minutes in which to make your comments. You may take a seat after completion of your comments or questions, and the council or administration will then respond if necessary. Costas Eftemios, 58 Curtis, Piscataway. There are two ordinance violations in our block. They were created by our Justice of the Peace. It's 400 square feet from two different homes. Uh, 200 square feet that become an eyesore, Mr. Harim, what's up? When is that going to be taken care of?
Thank you. Hi, my name is Amanda Legere, and I live on 98 Pleasant View Drive. I've been a Piscataway resident for the past three years, and for that same duration, I've been a nurse at Robert Wood Johnson University Hospital. Back in October, me and several of my colleagues came before you to spread awareness about the sobering reasons we went on strike. Just as a brief recap, decades of research show how vital it is for nurses to have explicit thresholds on the number of patients they can take care of. Safer nurse-patient ratios emphasize quality over quantity and are an important factor in reducing preventable complications and deaths. Understaffing nurses undermines the care we can provide and the compounded stress and guilt for each shift this happens is detrimental to our identity as professionals. We went on strike because we could no longer tolerate this as being the status quo. After four months, our union leadership and the hospital have reached a tentative agreement, which reportedly includes provisions for enforceable and appropriate staffing ratios. Once these exact details are disclosed to us, we will vote whether or not we feel this is worthy of our patients. We are cautiously optimistic. We have won our battle, but the war is not over. What happened at our hospital is not an isolated incident, but is part of a larger public health crisis in New Jersey. A study revealed 75% of nurses in New Jersey hospitals rate their staffing as inadequate, and the same percentage say that the situation is only growing more dire. This year alone, New Jersey dropped from ranking number one in the nation for having the highest percentage of hospitals score an A for safety down to 13. Never again in New Jersey should nurses have to go through what we did in the name of patient safety. So we need to become one less state that doesn't have a safe staffing law. Piscataway was the first town hall we attended and it was the start of taking this fight beyond our picket line. And thank you for your previous oral resolution advocating for us in our strike. We are here tonight to request if the council would consider passing an additional resolution supporting New Jersey's safe staffing bills, S304 and A4536, that would establish standards for every hospital. These resolutions serve as testimony that safe staffing matters to constituents and that these bills deserve a future. We have laid the groundwork, but we can only get you so far if you won't stand up for yourselves. This cause cannot and should not be fought by nurses alone, not when the public has 50% equity in the outcome, whether these bills are passed or not. We are happy to provide any clarity and resources you need to help make an informed decision on behalf of the citizens of Piscataway. And again, thank you. Thank you. You have to hold it down. Button. Button. Sorry about that. Oh, too much technology, my bad. <laughs> uh, once again, good evening. Uh, my name is Roberto Molina Bon, and even though I don't live in Piscataway, I live here in, um, in your next door neighbor, uh, with your avenue in Dunellen. I do have family here in Piscataway who live across the block on Fisher Avenue. And I'm here with the 1,700 nurses, well, the representative <laughs> of 1,700 nurses, uh, pleading uh, a similar request. <coughs> Last night at Dunellen, they passed a resolution that we're requesting to request to ask the le municipal leaders to pass the resolutions S304 and A4536. Uh, you can join uh, the other municipalities, which include Sayreville, Clifton, Milltown, Edison, Highland Park, 
Franklin Township, Dunellen, and Monroe counties. We are also asking that you please call on the assemblymen, Joe Danielson and Joseph Egan, as well as Senator Bob, Bob Smith to push for this bill. We also have a call to action to the town and if um, community members can also call on their legislators, this will greatly help our push for safety in the hospitals. I think that you guys have been part of a hospital at some point. I mean, not part of, but been at a hospital. And very frequently, patients call for their nurses. And on their dismay, they're trying to figure out where their nurses are. And many times, they're thinking that they're just sloughing somewhere or like, you know, they can be found for no reason. However, on our side, we are frustrated because we can't get to them because we have many other higher priority patients that we need to take care of. Addressing the safe staffing bill can you know, help both the patients that are looking for their nurses, as well as us giving us the tools and the time to be able to take care of those patients who you know, clearly need us. Um, so this is the request that I have for you today. Thank you. Hello, my name is Michael Taddock and I'm a resident of Metuchen and I come here with the 1700 nurses on strike. To speak on behalf of the 1700 nurses at Robert Wood Johnson Hospital in New Brunswick, as you may or may not know, we've been on strike for five months and on September 1st, the nurses got stripped their health insurance. We are here, we are out here fighting for safe staffing standards. I am a two-time patient and both were in the ER. I had I had to wait more than five hours, and when I got in, I didn't even get the proper care that I needed. So I come here to ask you today to please help and support the nurses by looking over and supporting and co-sponsoring the S304 and A4536 bill. We need more nurses in the bedside. We need more nurses inside the hospital, especially the bedside. If this goes in effect, all the New Jersey hospitals need to comply with this, including all the nursing home facilities. We need we went we already went to the top and the top doesn't want to support us, so we're going to start at the bottom. We're going to ask you guys to please support us because we need safe staffing, not only in New Jersey, but we need sta safe staffing all over, but we need safe staffing, especially in New Jersey and especially at the bedside. Thank you very much. Anyone else wish to speak? Now I'm going to close the public portion. Council President, um, in in light of the nurses coming out tonight, and we want to thank you. I think we we said this. I think previously we've all um, we we need our nurses. We you know we've all been either at the hospital or a loved one at the hospital. It had it not been for the nurses, we know um, our loved ones or ourselves would not be um, in a good uh, situation. Um, and at that time, we, we actually, I uh, think, called on a resolution asking the governor to, to end the strike, which could have happened um, quickly, but it didn't. So, you know, this board um, isn't familiar with the two bills that you're speaking of very well. We, we do know that um, our senator is supporting um, or has looked into signing on to a different bill. But that said, I think um, if, the, if the board members agree with me, and they may not, but uh, maybe they will, um, what I would love to do is to um, hold a voice resolution um, asking um, this council to um, call on our legislatures in Trenton to hold hearings on the bill. This will allow for the, f <laughs> okay, good. I'm, I'm glad you like that because I think, um, and I come from a union family, I think that the more publicity around the bills where the news media is covering it and the average persons um, start to hear um, that in fact there have been no sort of laws on the books protecting you folks from being overworked as you have for so many years. 
So I would like um, for this council, who's very much in support of, of, of you folks, and especially, of course, Robert Wood Johnson, right? We are right across the river. Um, some of you or many of you live in this town and um, are our residents um, who we represent. So I believe that what we could do here that would really be beneficial, not just for um, you all, but really for our municipality, for our residents, is that our state legislature holds public and open meetings on um, these bills so that the public can hear it and uh, a real vote can be taken. I don't know what the board feels about that, but. I don't know if I can add in there that it should be directed to the uh, Speaker uh, Coughlin. Yes. And also to Senate President Scateri. Because right. ultimately it'll be their. Their decision. Their decision. To hold the hearings, where, where right. Has, so. Yeah, absolutely, and it should be public. So I don't know if I have the support of the board here, but I think it would be a valuable um, resolution, at least for us to impress upon our leaders in Trenton to and, move and forward. And can I make add also in there, it should go down to the comptroller because obviously he needs something to do. So yeah, I just. <laughs> yes, it should go to the, anyone. The acting comptroller who can't yeah. get confirmed. So you know that you have this council support. We firmly believe in, in the power of these public hearings um, and that it should be um, something that all New Jersey residents hear um, publicly, so. You're making a motion then? Uh, yeah, well, I guess so. Is I there anything you want to say? Yeah, do so I have a second? <laughs> I second the motion. Mr. Seed, would you please take the roll? Councilwoman Cahill? Yes. Councilwoman Carmichael? Yes. Councilman Espinosa? Definitely yes. Councilwoman Lombardi? Yes. Councilman Rouse? Yeah. Yes. Councilman Shaw? Yes. yes. Council President Ern? Yes. Item passes. And Council. Council Mayor, just for uh, the last oral resolution, we memorialized into a writing and sent it over to the governor's office. We'll make sure we do that with this one and, and get it sent over. Sure. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Meeting adjourned. Have a great night, everybody.